Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. The fly you see in the vise is a pulling hopper. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 10 and it's finished in black nickel on a medium wire. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Troutline. It's the Sumo thread at 50 denier. As you can see, it's black. Now, as always, with the GSP threads, we're going to get a little touch of super glue onto the shank of the hook. And then we can spread that touch of glue up and down the shank before eventually catching in just in behind the eye and laying down a bed of silk. Now we're getting to that time of year now where uh, the terrestrials are on the water, the fish are high in the water, feeding on anything they can get their, their mouths around really. Um, they're starting to bulk up, getting ready for the winter coming. Uh, so there's quite a lot of surface sport to be had if you're, you're in the right place at the right time of course. Uh, first thing I want to do is add in my wire rib. It's 0.1 millimetres and it's a silver wire. I'm just going to catch that in. Not quite the entire length of the shank of the hook. As you can see, I've stopped maybe four millimetres back from the eye. Now, I'm going to come all the way back down to the bottom. And the dubbing body I'm using is some seals for it's, it's actually natural seals for dyed. Uh, this is a, a light claret, they call it. Now, seals for is notoriously difficult to dub with, so before I attempt to create my noodle, I'm just going to add some sticky wax to my thread, and this just helps to make the seals for behave, if you like. Uh, even then, it can be a bit of a nuisance to, to get to sit for you, but we'll do our best. And let's create our noodle. There we go. Lovely shade of claret, this actually. I quite like it. I don't know why, but in September, claret just seems to work really well. Uh, and it seems to go on through the month of September into early October. Uh, it's just a great colour. Now, I've got enough dubbing on there as I'm happy with. So I'm going to grab my wire rib. Now I'm not going to counter spin the wire rib. I'm going to chase round the way I went with the dubbing. And I've got nice even turns there. Or certainly they look even on my side. They might look a bit different on your side. So I've trapped my wire rib in there. I'm going to get a couple of turns in front then I can twist away the remaining remainder of the wire. Now, before I uh, carry on, I'm just going to come in with my Velcro brush and scruff that out. Now, this is not an out and out dry fly. As I said at the start, it's a pooling hopper and I want to fish it high in the water, but not on the surface, kind of in the top six inches to a foot down. So the more that you've got the body scruffed out like this the, the less likely it is to sink away to nothing unless you're fishing it on a fast sinking line of course so uh, the attractor if you like for me on this fly I'm going to be using some of these legs here they're pre-tied I think they're from a company called Ban Valley Flies they do things like uh, little packets of generic cape fibres if you can't afford a cape you just buy the little packets and it's the same with the, the legs you know they come in little selections like this if you don't want to go to the trouble of dyeing your own uh, these are like a hot orangey colour and what I've done is I've inverted my vice and I don't want it particularly long the legs just come in just protruding out the back of the hook really I'm going to have to split them, so I've got two either side, then I can capture them in, uh, invert my vise. Now I've seen a lot of people, when they're tying these sort of pulling type flies, they tie the legs on top. Now, at the height I intend to fish this, 
that on top's no good. The fish won't appreciate the legs if they're tied on top and you're put and they're looking up. You, you want the legs to come below the shank of the hook. Okay, next thing then is the first hackle. I'll double hackle this. And the first one then is, is simply, it's a grizzle cape that's been dyed black. I've already pre-selected a feather. And before tying in the stock that I've revealed, I'll show you in a second. Uh, I just want to get a bit of wax on my thread just to help me grip the stock. So I'm going to come in fairly tight on this. You don't want that stock coming out. Now, the distance I have between the body of the fly and the shank of the hook, I want half to be done with the first hackle. So I've got that there. I'm going to grab my hackle pliers and I'm looking for a minimum of three turns, really. So there's the first one. And what this cock hackle does is it helps to stand the secondary hackle that I'm going to be tying up so the fly won't just collapse as I'm pulling it through the water. We're going to get some disturbance if you like. So when I bring it up again, I'm going to bring my thread round to meet that hackle. And then I can get a couple of turns in front, coming with my scissors and just remove the excess. Now, I'll slick everything back and have a little tidy up here at the front. And that's left me plenty space. Now the secondary hackle simply comes from a, a hen cape and what I want to do with this, I've already picked out a feather here, it's fairly large. Uh, I don't know if you remember back to when we started, it seems like a lifetime ago, but it is a fairly large hackle at the front. Now what this is going to do for me is when I'm pulling the fly back or mixing up the retrieve, it's going to give me lots of movement. So what I've got is the tip of the feather in my hackle pliers and I'm just going to pull it down to create that Christmas tree effect. So I'm going to tie in my secondary hackle on the tag and again I'm getting quite a bit of pressure onto my thread just to hold that into place. I'll bring my thread to the front of the hook. I'm going to just give my bobbin a clockwise spin just to tighten everything up down there. I don't want it too much but just to tighten it up and then I can grab my hackle pliers and simply hackle round. Now you want the hen hackle, or certainly I do, you might think different, a little bit larger than the cock hackle that you, you tied in initially. So let's just get that wrapped round. Now it takes a little while, a bit of patience, but I think the effect is definitely worth it. Now, how would I fish this? Um, certainly as a team of flies. Uh, it's, it's primarily designed to fish from a drifting boat and targeting rising fish as you come across them. So as a team of flies, probably on quite a long leader, anywhere between 18 and, and 22 feet. Uh, depending on the clarity of water, uh, I would usually fish three hoppers together, not much more than that. Uh, and any fish that you sort of see swimming up lanes, you can pull this across their nose and more often than not, you'll get an immediate reaction. They'll either come and chase the movement of the fly or they'll just take it straight off the top as it lands. So I'm just building my head up slightly there. I'm not going to risk pulling at the feather, the stem's strong, so I'm going to come in with my scissors and just remove that part. Now just uh, play about with it until it's sitting how, how you want it to sit. Now 
Although this fly is primarily designed to fish subsurface, I would treat it up like a dry fly um, initially and then but that would be it. I wouldn't bother um, looking after it, you know, after it caught a few fish, I'd just let it fish as is. So it would be fishing subsurface. Just caught in a bit of the hackle there. Tighten that up. Now, you can finish the head with cement or super glue. The video's gone on long enough, though. I'm not going to hold you up anymore. Uh, but that will be very effective this month. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.